Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here to pack up, ship, and finalize our level. I have Metro loaded up here in Hammer. There's still some dev textures. There's still a lot of dev textures. A full level takes many, many hours over many, many months to truly finish. What we're here to do today is wrap up, put a bow tie on this, and upload it to the workshop. There's a few things that we need to do from a checklist, and the first one is make sure that our level is clipped. What this means is that stairs are clipped, out of bounds areas are clipped so players cannot get to them. We want to start by disabling all of the stuff that we don't care about. This is pretty much just going to be tool brushes so I have a cleaner view. I've briefly mentioned this texture before, the tools player clip texture. This texture is only solid to the player and the bomb. This is one of the textures that we can use to prevent players from getting out of our level in areas where they're not supposed to. While this brush is fine to use where players can't walk on it, in areas that have stairs, we want to clip these off for smoother movement. Instead of using player clip, we want to use the regular clip texture. The clip texture comes in a flavor of varieties that all have different sounds when the player walks on them. Player clip always sounds like the default texture, which is a concrete. We're able to pick our poison here between dirt, glass, grass, whatever we want. So I'll select concrete and I want to clip these stairs. Clipping the stairs is easy. We're just going to create a block with our brush tool and then just make a cut with the clipping tool so we have a smooth ramp. You'll want to fly through your level and do this to every staircase. We also want to put player clip on top of the objects that players should not be able to get onto. In my case, I have these train cars. I can clip these off, apply a player clip to them, and then just scale them upwards. I'm going to end up doing this to all of my roofs and everything at the level that I don't want the players to get on top of. I'm done player clipping my level now. You may notice that some of the buildings don't have player clip on them. While you can go ahead and put player clip on them, you don't have to do every building because a player can only jump 64 units high and there is a player stacking limit in CSGO. We all probably have a guy on our friends list that plays a little bit too much of the KZ game mode, so it's a good idea to have him join your map and just try to boost out and find where he can get on top of things that he probably shouldn't be on. The next thing on our list is generating the KV file for our level. The KV file dictates what teams have what player models. Should the terrorists be Leet? Should they be Phoenix? Should the CTs be GIGN? Should they be SAS? If we hit F1 to open up the developer wiki and we just do a search for KV, and we go to KV file, here are examples on how to create all sorts of KV files for our map. But Notepad isn't that user friendly, so if we scroll down to the bottom, there's an external link to a web-based KV file generator. We type in the name of our level, our name here, and then we just select what team we want for what side. For this map, I'll have the SAS and the Phoenix fighting each other. Then we just click generate and get file. Now that the KV file is saved, we can open up our desktop. All we gotta do is take this file, go to our game directory, and paste it in. The KV file needs to sit right next to our BSP file. That's all we have to do with the KV file for now. It won't function until we pack it inside of the BSP with the rest of our custom content later. Since we're already in our maps folder, we need to regenerate our nav mesh. Let's go ahead and delete mapname.nav. And now let's run the final compile on our level. At this point, all the entities that I want are placed, cube maps throughout the map, we're good to go. I don't foresee any changes until the kind people in the Steam comments or Reddit let us know what issues have been found with the level. When we go to run map this time, we need to click the edit button, select our full compile HDR only compile, and hit copy. Name this final compile HDR only. Click close and select that from our list. Under the light exe line, under parameters, at the front we want to add dash final. This will tell the VRAD compiler to increase the quality of our light environment and indirect lighting by spending more time firing rays. It also tells another parameter that was added during the wildfire update to provide better lighting for our prop statics. Let's click go and let the level compile. That compile took a little bit longer than we're used to, but now let's go ahead and load up the game. 
Once the game's loaded, we just want to open our console, type map, and then the map name, and hit enter. And once we join a team, we need the nav mesh to build again. Generating the nav mesh can take a few minutes, so just let it go in the background. Our nav mesh has finished generating. The next thing that we need to do before we ship our level is build cube maps. If we want to make sure that our cube maps are working, we can just go down to an area where we know we have reflective material, such as the metro, or we can use a command like r show nv cube map one to have that come up onto our view model and we can see that the world is reflected around us. We can now go ahead and exit out of our game. Now we need to pack the level. This is the process of taking all custom content that we've created and putting it inside of the BSP file so other people who play our level will have the custom materials and assets that we've created. There are many third-party tools that are able to pack your level for you. My personal favorite is called Vide. If we head on over to tophatwaffle.com slash downloads and then just do a search for V-I-D-E Vide, we want the Valve Integrated Development Environment. This is a community tool. And then once it's downloaded, extract it off into its own folder. And then we want to load vide.exe. Once vide is open, we want to use the pack file lump editor, which is the icon all the way on the right. We can click that to open it. And then under BSP options, click open. We want to go into CSGO and maps. From here, select DE Metro or your map. We want to make sure that we select the BSP file that's inside of CSGO slash maps. We don't want to select the BSP that's next to our VMF file because this one does not have cube maps built inside of it. Let's click open and we'll get a list of all the files that are already embedded inside of the BSP. All of these files up the top are the cube maps that have been built inside the level. The VHV files are static prop lighting information that has been baked down and saved into these files. We want to click scan. This will allow us to scan for all content automatically. We want to now select browse and we want to select the CSGO folder. This is the folder that contains gameinfo.txt, which is where Vide needs to look to scan for content. We can click select folder and now click the scan button. Vide will scan our BSP and see if it can locate any content inside of our game folders. All of the objects that are in red are assumed to be inside the VPK folders and as a result all other players will already have that content. The objects in orange however are the files that it has found on our local computer and it knows that those need to go inside the BSP so other people can see them. Let's click auto, add, and then click apply. If we scroll down to the bottom, the content to be added will be listed here in yellow. If we look really closely, however, it has missed a few things. Do remember that most of the community tools that we have are old and not updated. Since Counter-Strike Go is constantly being updated, sometimes we have to help these old tools out and tell them where some content is manually. As of right now, it has missed the KV file along with our multi-level radar. One thing to note is that the Workshop Publisher will automatically pack your standard one-level radar along with your nav mesh. If these are the only custom things that you have, you don't have to worry about packing your level. To manually add these files into our BSP, we click the Add button and then browse to where they're located inside our game folder. I'll start by going to CSGO, Resource, Overview, and I want to select the radar files for DE Metro. I'll select the TXC file and the three DDS images and click open. This is where Vide gets a little bit unintuitive. We want to click cancel here. We can now type in the folder path that we want these to be packed in. We're packing from the root folder of CSGO. We delete everything and we're left with resource slash overviews. Click OK and it's going to ask if we want to overwrite overviews slash DE Metro. Let's tell it yes. And now down at the bottom, we have our three DDS images and our metro.txt and they're all inside of resource overviews. Again, this slash is from root of CSGO. So if the folder path extended to the left one more, it would be our CSGO folder. We now need to tell it to pack our KV file. We can click add again, CSGO, maps, locate your map name.kv, click cancel. And this time we just want to choose maps since this file needs to go in CSGO slash maps. Click OK and it will be added to the bottom of the list. Under BSP options, click save. All of our content that was yellow has turned green. This means that it's been saved inside the BSP file inside of our maps folder. If we go back to our maps folder, we can see that we have demetro.bsp, demetro.bsp.backup. The dot backup is a backup before we packed. If we loaded this file, it would act as if we hadn't packed it. 
the regular DE Metro is slightly larger because of our custom content has been embedded inside of the BSP. We now need to test the level by ourselves to make sure that that content is packed. The easiest way to verify this is to identify where you have custom content currently located. My custom content is in materials and resources. We need to remove our custom content from our game folder so when we load the BSP we can make sure that it all still loads. If I go into materials and under DE Metro, I can just rename this to demetro.old. By changing the file path, that has broken the connection that the non-packed BSP would need and they would show up as errors. Under the resource folder, I'll go to overviews and I'll take all of my Metro radar overviews, cut them and throw them on my desktop. This again will make it so if that content is not packed inside the BSP, the game won't find it and it will show up as an error. If you also have a second computer, you can just transfer the file over and test it there, or have a friend check it for you. Once the game is loaded, type map and then your map name. If you receive a C model loader map is invalid, no such map, this means you've left the map open in Vide's pack editor. Vide locks the file and then the game can't read it. To fix this, we just open Vide up and then close out of the pack lump editor. Now we can return to game and load our level successfully. Loading resources there took a second longer as it read all the resources from inside of our BSP file and our loading screen works. My custom bricks are still working along with the custom tile textures. If you discover that any content is missing from your BSP, this is just because the auto packer was unable to locate it. That situation, you just need to click add like we did with our radar overview and manually specify where it is and what path it should be packed to. Now I'm inside of the level with everything packed and this is my final fly through. If I quickly jump into third person, I'm the SAS player model that I wanted to use for my KV file. So I know that's working. I want to fly around, make sure that everything is exactly as it should be. There's no faces with bad lighting. I have cube maps. I can also turn on R draw clip brushes too. This will show me all of the clip brushes in my world so I can attempt to try to get out of my own level. If I can't get out of my own level, that's a pretty good start. Everything checks out, my soundscapes are working, I'm ready to take screenshots of my level. Taking screenshots is very important for when you upload your level. You want to showcase the best parts of your level and the most unique parts. You also want to make sure that the screenshots look as good as they can. You want to start by heading over to your options and max out your video settings. It doesn't matter if your computer can handle it or not, we're taking still screenshots. No one can see frames per second in the still image. After that, there's a screenshot bind, which I'll put in text at the bottom of the video. This will hide everything on your screen. It also disables draw distance and disables a few optimization things. Now let's hop into no clip mode and just take some good screenshots of our level. You can use any screenshot software. I'm just using the built-in Steam screenshot. After you have a large amount of screenshots taken, you can go ahead and disconnect from your game. We're now ready to publish our many, many hours of hard work onto the workshop so we know we can receive all the constructive criticism that the Steam comments and Reddit have to offer. Let's press the tilde key to open the console and type workshop publish. You do need to be at the CSGO main menu for this to work. As soon as you hit enter, it will pull up your published files list. It defaults to weapon finish and we want to choose map. We can click the add button and this is the publisher for our level. We can give it a title of Metro and this is also the title that the game uses at the loading screen when the level is loading. We can give it a description, though the description doesn't really matter here as we're just going to change it after it uploads. Let's click the browse button and we need to select a screenshot for our image. I'll just choose snapshot 000. Let's check our game types, which is classic and deathmatch. Hit browse, browse to CSGO, maps, and select our DE Metro. We now want to check the I have read the workshop FAQ because we all have read the workshop FAQ in terms of service. Click publish to open what I call the M4A4 Howl box. I call it this because it's essentially here to prevent another M4 Howl from happening in CSGO. It essentially states that you or your contributors to your level have created all original artwork in this submission. If you haven't, bad things may happen to you. We type I understand and hit okay. 
CSGO will lock up for a second. It's going to zip up our file and then upload it to the cloud. Once it's done uploading, it opens Steam in our default web browser, and this is our level. All of the information here is easier changed in the web browser than in the publisher. So let's click Add or Edit Images. Under Select New Image to Upload, click Choose, and then go to where your screenshots are and select them all and click Open, and then click Upload. It'll think for a little bit while it uploads all the files. After all of the files have uploaded, you'll see them all listed here. If you have problems uploading images using your default web browser, you can always use the Steam client. Just go to your profile and then workshop items and you'll be able to click the same edit images button. Let's click save and continue. And then back on the main page, we have all of our screenshots here. You can upload a ton of screenshots for your level. Down here on the details is the image that we chose on the workshop publisher. You cannot change this image from the workshop. You have to do that from inside workshop publish. This image is also the image that the game loads as the background loading screen. We can now click edit title and description. This will allow us to add a description with any information we find relevant to the level. After you've typed up your description, if it's a longer description or has markup like images embedded or bolded text, anything like that, you want to save this text to a backup text file on your computer. Every time you update the map on the workshop publish UI, it truncates the description down to a lower character amount that just obliterates about half your description. Let's click save now and my changes have been saved. We can go ahead and go back to Metro, and here it is. Let's click subscribe so we can subscribe to it. Let's say we want to update that workshop entry. If we type workshop publish again, if we select map and then Metro, when we click edit, we'll get the same menu that we were presented with when we initially uploaded to the workshop, except this time we're able to add some change logs. All you do is click browse to select your updated version of the VSP, I have read the workshop FAQ and click update. If we want to load the level from the workshop, we can click play, offline with bots, and under workshop, DE Metro is right there. We can also load it using map, space. If we start to type in workshop and just hit the up arrow, it's the latest uploaded entry to the workshop. So it has the highest file ID and it'll be at the bottom of our list. If we hit enter, we get our loading screen. It says Metro from the workshop title and we have our background image that we selected during the upload. And this is it. This is DE Metro. And that's gonna wrap up our journey together, guys. We've gone from loading Hammer for the first time to shipping a level. If you've watched all 21 episodes, that means you've listened to me teach for five hours and 42 minutes. If you don't hate my voice by now, I certainly do. I appreciate that everyone took the time to sit down and come together as a community to learn what it takes to help make the game that we all love better. This really is a labor of love that every level designer enjoys doing. I would also like to thank ECS for giving me this opportunity to spread knowledge of my craft with anyone and everyone who loves to learn. If you're interested in learning more about level design, you can always find more information at the links below. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and happy mapping.